Det er på vej, skal Ja. Lækker. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, twice now. That's why I keep it. That's becoming a constant. Yeah. Come on. Every single week. Okay. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> we are back for the second episode of the Bullseye Pod. After the first one was a roaring success, I think. We had yeah. a great guest on, Davy Krill, who then went on to score a phenomenal try or yeah. finish a phenomenal try on Saturday, right? Chad loft his fast fall. Um, was brilliant. So I think we the good luck charm for the players. Yeah, I think so. It's a good start, Mark. You know, you know, um, good luck charm. Yeah, even you know, you mentioned how he's a close Jack Noll down. He did that yeah, all game. That. So like you know, a man of his word. That was absolutely perfect because he literally yeah. said exactly how he was going to contain Jack Noll. We got yeah. that clip of him smoking. Unreal. Noll, put it out. Went. Uh, I don't want to say viral, but it did very very well. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's kick things off now. Henry Immelman signing. Big news. Um, low key, really good signing in my opinion. Mm-hmm. He's v- super versatile. He's obviously played a lot of rugby for Edinburgh at fullback, but he played a lot of rugby at outside centre for Montpellier. Big oak, 1.9 metres tall, over 100 kgs, physical in contact, consistently over the advantage line, bit of a gain line merchant, yeah. and got a cannon for a boot as well. So, yeah. big, big signing, and we need depth at 15. Right? Yeah, back that. We need depth at 15, and like you said, he can play centre as well, so anyone who can cover that centre position is also important. You know, great college guy, nice homecoming for him to come back as well to South Africa. Um, and you know, you couldn't have picked a better team, Mark. You know, yeah. so, there's not much I can say about Henry because we've seen him play. I know he's a good rugby player, so it's going to be good to have to extend the depth in our squad, Mark. I just want to say, uh, we are playing a drinking game every time KK puts his finger in his ear. You have to take a shot. Not yet, yet. Not, not yet. yet. I'm waiting for it to happen. <laughs> okay, hot of the press. Couple of interesting stories here. First one the red card debate. Henry Slade copped. Cop the carrot, um, yep. high tackle, obvious high tackle, wrapping the jaw of Kurt Lawrence. Yes, first contact was made on the shoulder, slipped up, but still super dangerous tackle, clothesline tackle, taking his head off. Um, a lot of people in Europe, especially in the UK, very adamant that it was not a red. Luke and Dicky, his teammate, yeah. who wasn't playing, went on and said, how soft is rugby? It was an obvious red card. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the rules and the sure. way um, red cards are now given. In, in rugby at the moment, but yeah. by the letter of the law, it was a red, was card. A red card. 100%. Contact with the jaws are red. Yeah, but I don't understand how, because I saw Mark, um, I nearly touched my ear, I saw how he um, apparently got um, taken away, um, the, the sanction of the red card. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. Well, afterwards, yeah. they, before a committee, they determined that it wasn't, it shouldn't have been a red. Okay. Um, and therefore, he's not going to be banned, or not banned, he's not going to be suspended. He's going to be allowed to be included in the English squad for, for the Six Nations. So, yeah, yeah. they now determined that um, maybe the level of force wasn't uh, didn't meet the sanction of a red card. I disagree. Just as our current current laws are applied, yeah. it's up to interpretation on the field. Looking at just with my my eyes right there in front of me, I saw I thought red yeah. by the current law. Does that mean that I think um, the way the laws are being interpreted now and the amount of red cards that are being dished out is correct? Is good for rugby? Certainly not. It's yeah. terrible for the game. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to actually bring up I don't know if you saw the game, the Stormers London Irish game. Two red cards yeah. there. Um, the first one, Marnie LeBorg making the line break. Two on one overlap. He gets taken out. Yeah. Um, direct hit head contact, straight red. But their coach, Les Kiss, comes out and is very vocal saying he doesn't understand how it's a red. He thinks a penalty at most. And again, head to head contact by our law is a, di- is a straight red card. Yeah. So I don't get his, his thinking. Now, if he wants to disagree with the fact that you know, it's a rugby collision yeah. or that should not be a red. That's something else we can discuss. But the referee was correct on the day giving out the red. 100% Mark. And also saw on, on Dobbo, he also made mention that Dobbo, obviously, um, you know, he know, his team beat London Irish, right? Yeah. But he made mention of how, you know, the the red cards are really the game a bit, but it's not the, the ref's fault. It's the law's fault. So that they, they need to look at how, yes. uh, how the laws, uh, the, the ref is interpreting the law perfectly. Yeah. It's now what, that's why I say the rugby law sometimes there's so many gray areas, you know, mm. so you, you don't really know um, which side you, you stand on. Well, times. the one thing I'm a big proponent of, we chatted about it off camera, is a 20 minute red card rule that we're now trying out mm. in, in the Southern Hemisphere in um, the rugby championship. Um, I'm all for it. I think a red card, 20 minutes off, you have that player gets replaced. I think that's, a big enough sanction for that player. And again, okay, that player can be dealt with by by IRB outside of the actual contest. Give him a six-week ban afterwards. Increase the increase the, the harshness, we want to call it that, mm. or the severity of the ban after the game. Okay. But let's reduce the severity on field because that player knows he'll be dealt with. He'll be out of rugby for four or five weeks. It's a, it's a massive deterrent for him on the field. But it doesn't end the game as a contest okay. on the field when there's so many investors, so many fans. Yeah. Everyone's, I mean, we, Springboks France. 
Yeah. Peter um, Toy was pushed by Quaker Smith yeah. head to head. He gets a red, ends the game as a contest. Yeah. It, uh, that's what I want to avoid. Yeah, right? I, I'm, do you know what, Mark? I'm, I know me and you have gone back and forth on this, but how you've explained it now in terms of like the sanctions after the games, yeah. I think that's very important. That they have to get they have to get something harsh because I always say that if a player gets a red card, it must mm. the full he must get the full um, what you call it the, force of the, law. the the full force of the law. Do you know what I mean? But if he gets that after the game, then maybe yeah. But also a red card in its in nature, fundamentally, to get a red card is to be a man down in a rugby field for the rest of the game. Yeah, but you know what I mean? can change. Like yeah, 20 yeah. minutes, his game ends. He gets yeah. a red, he's done. Yeah, yeah, I got you. All for 20 minutes, you cop that 20 minutes without uh, a man down and then you have to replace that player. Again, strategy, it affects the team, it affects how the coach pr- approaches the game. There's a lot of other factors yeah. that add on, onto it without totally killing the context of the game. So, yeah, I'm 100% no, fair enough. Fair all enough. for that. And I have to concede the, that. The one thing people are saying is that... Um, it, are the players getting it wrong or are the refs and the law and IRB getting it wrong? We cannot keep blaming the players because the laws have been this way for years now, several years. It's been this harsh. Um, we can't keep bl- blaming the players. At least every single player in rugby is getting it wrong, which I refuse to believe. Apparently, they're training it week in and week out, low body position when you make contact, changing the angles when flying into a rug. But when you're playing a game at that level, at an elite level, you've got 215 kg behemoths going into going into a collision at a ruck, you're flying at an angle and a player changes his his angle by one degree and suddenly it goes from being chest height to neck height. Again, with, with no ill intent, no malice, I just think we need to avoid totally killing a game with the red card for that. Okay, yeah, let's, move enough, so. let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, SA Rugby Mag came out with an article about Wandi Sumalani settling at 13. He was brilliant on the weekend. It was his best game there, second back-to-back game. And the the previous game, we actually thought he, he played really well, but the ball didn't come his way. Yeah. But we weren't talking about him in a negative light. It wasn't like he was missing tackles, not making the passes, not making the reads, all of that. He just had a quiet game at 13, but was doing his job. But against Exeter, wow. two tries, 130 meters, he was dominant. Exactly. It was so good, Marcos. I mean, uh, um, I thought he, he, he could have maybe copped that man of the match award, you know, even defensibly. Um, you know, the, the Bulls fans have been calling for him to play at 13. And as soon as um, um, they put him at 13, he shines, you know I mean, that's where he's most, most, most natural. Um, will he, is he, is he the answer for us at number 13, Marcos, um, going yeah. forward? Um, or um, do we, you know, discuss like Cornell, Lionel, because they're getting older. Is he our yeah. answer to put him at number 13 role? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think Cornell and Lionel, like both, what, 33, 34 years old, in the twilights of their career, I think he's a long-term option. Whether he's the current, I don't know. Whether mm. he's the short-term, if they're going to keep investing in him at 13 there. Yeah, that's what um, I'm wondering. Yeah, or they're going to move to a Lionel or a Cornell. That'll be very interesting. I mean, playing 13 again, uh, tomorrow against Lyon. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. But he certainly, I think he's the long-term option there. But I love what Jake White's done, playing him at fullback, making him versatile. He says, this is your key to a springbok cap, is being versatile, being able to play multiple positions. So it's in his best interest to be playing at 15, to experiment on the yeah. wing. But ultimately, we all know his most settled and comfortable position is 13. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I agree with that because I was wondering, because he wasn't playing 13 at all, you know, until yeah. like the last couple of games. But now that he's gone to 13 and the signing of Henry Imelman as well, maybe that is a sign to show that mm-hmm. maybe that, you know, one similar line is our future number 13 going forward, like, like long-term, you said, Marky. Mark, I've got a couple of articles that I've picked out, my boy, yep. that I've, I've read through. Um, I, I've picked this one out. SA teams blocked from hosting home semis in the Heineken Champions Cup. Um, I don't understand this, you know. No, we're not stakeholders. Oh. We're only st- stakeholders 24-25 season. Okay, okay, okay. That's why. Is, uh, is yeah. that why? Okay, cool. But anyway, um, so um, essentially what, what the article was saying, um, we will obviously... Um, uh, if we if there's a home, se- home a round of 16 game and quarterfinal where we were able to host that, but when it comes to semis, unless um, if we're playing a team from Europe, it, it will, those semis the semis will be in Europe. But if we're playing a South African team, the game will be in South Africa. Yeah. Um, with that, I don't know if I'm. I guess yes, we stakeholders and and all of that. But like, no, we're not stakeholders. You know, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying with with all of that with the stakeholder issue. Um, with all that said, I do, it's I think it's pretty unfair. You know what I mean? If you if you let's say you top the you top pool, uh, let's say Storms had to top pool, uh, yeah. and then they play in a the semi final. You know they've done, done so well to work for a home semi. You know you want to play in front of your home fans in that game. But that's why I thought I should. I no, should I, bring agree it up. I agree. I yeah, agree. Yeah. Um, but at least now we're getting to play around the sixteen quarters. There was a there was a time when we weren't even going to play quarters at home yeah. because we're not uh, a stakeholder. So at least we're getting our quarters. Should we make it? But agreed, it is unfair. But that's just the way it is at the moment. And when we are stakeholders, we'll get those home semis. Okay, that's awesome. And then just quickly, Marcos, um, the, the second one, it's come to do with that. Stormers and Bulls could be on Heineken Cup collision course. Um, that's Wouldn't awesome. we all love to see that? Yeah, that's awesome. For, in the round of 16 in April. So there's Imagine a, that at Loftus Festival. Yeah, so there's a big chance um, that so the, that the, if the Bulls win um, t- tomorrow and the Stormers win, 
if the Pools and Stormers win, we'll probably play a, a round of 16 at, in, at Newlands. But if Stormers slip up against Clermont and we win tomorrow, it comes to Loftus Fastball round of 16 in another North South derby. So mm. I thought that's an awesome, there was an, uh, was an awesome article there on um, Super Sports telling us about, you know, and what are the, 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 repl uh, the replications and what can happen um, if we do meet in April. Jeez. That'll be absolute humding, a firework. Yeah. yeah. Okay, last game against Exeter. I want to chat about that. 39-28 victory, pretty commanding. Avenging that 44-14 defeat in Devon, this time with our full-strength team. Um, Kurt Yarnser runs with man of the match, beat uh, eight defenders, most uh, in that round by any player, made over 130 meters, which also most in the round. Wandy also had 130. And um, Walk getting the man of the match, and he was just so dominant. I mean, yeah. he's so dangerous in the tram lines, brilliant in the air. He's got, he ticks pretty much every box that you want in a fullback. He provides that punch in the backfield that we know Jake White loves, so he was phenomenal. Um, but there's a couple of other players. A guy who had a sneaky good game, I want to chat about, Rune for Mark. He's really stepping up into that number four jersey. We said when Vault leaves, who was going to step up and uh, and grab that jersey by the scruff of its neck. You know, Jacques Duplessis, we thought it was going to be him. Unfortunately, he cops another injury. It could still be him again. But Ruan for Mark really stepping up. We needed him to be that physical, nasty kind of enforcer. And he really was. I mean, yeah, he was he was so dominant, so physical. Played with his hair on fire. Yeah, he was really good, Marcos. And then you, and other two players, quickly want to look at, obviously, Aurich and Krobis. I think they were really good again. And Krobis over the ball. He, um, um, he bags some meat. Aurich bags some meat as well. Um, so those guys have, you know, playing good rugby, especially Krobis, Marcos. Aurich is always good, you know. But, but, Krobis, but Krobis is really proving to be a consistent starting number two over the ball, one of the better players on the park. How is he not a springboard? Yeah, yeah, how it's, is he not? At home, tell us. How is he not a springboard? Yeah, I don't understand. It doesn't make... Does he, he's, he's the most on-form hooker in, in, in the country, playing yeah. inside the country for sure. But, John Mark, you, you, went up, you spoke about Claw already. And as we look at our attack, Mark, I think we, were, we really turned it on yet again. You know, 373 metres gained, six tries, 73, 73 passes, 10 defenders beaten, four clean breaks and four offloads. So, we were turning it on in the, in the outside lines, Marcos. And... Yeah, I mean, it was a great, a great win. Um, I think that red card also helped us. I think Henry Slade because there was a lot they of played, they played better without Henry Slade. Yeah, yeah, but I think the, I think with Henry Slade, there was always jeopardy in the game. I think jeopardy in the game for the Bulls. But I think when they lost Henry Slade. Um, yes, they, they had to play better because they're, they're, they're going no, to it's going to them. It's going to them. I think if they had Henry Slade on the, on the park, I think it, it's a much closer game, hundred percent. I think, okay, and, and, and also we scored too late. Remember, we scored those two tries, and they scored four tries, right? If if if, if Henry Slade is on, maybe we don't score those two tries. Um, the one stat, the one sneaky stat I want to chat about is our ruck success. This has become really impressive. Um, we've we've lost just six out of 186 rucks in the Champions Cup. That's a success rate of 97%. That's the best in the entire tournament. So we are so efficient at the ruck. We generate so much fastball, phenomenal ruck speed, and it gives us this phenomenal attacking platform. So our ruck speed has been yeah. incredible. It's been crazy good, elite levels. And on top of that, we're playing in the right areas. 49% of our rucks were in the Exeter 22, and we didn't lose a single one of them. So getting in the right areas, and that's when we play with the ball, keep ball in hand. Yeah. And... We just, you're not taking the ball off. That's yeah. the bottom line. No, you're definitely not, Mark. And we're just we're really strong with, with ball in hand. And like I said, that rack speed, that rack speed stat for me is just in, sensational. That were 97% of your own racks, and it's just, it's unheard of nearly. Um, and that just shows that the guys are really working hard um, with the forwards, especially Marky. We only had 51 rucks in the whole game. So that just shows you. We're kicking a lot of ball away. Exeter had 105 rucks. So more than double the rucks we had. And they scored 28 points and we scored 39. Just shows yeah. you the difference. They were just so much more efficient at the breakdown. And also at the breakdown, um, on, on, on when we're defending the breakdown, we're turning the ball over a lot. You know, 12 turnovers, one in that game, Marcus, from the vertical ball. So that's also sensational. Guys like Hrubis, those guys are coming in and really proving their worth. Okay. Uh, off the cuff, should we chat some uh, squad depth, perhaps? Yeah. So we're playing potentially in three tournaments this year yeah. uh, with the Curry Cup coming in soon. So... Are we developing the depth we need to, I mean, you said the treble. Well, obviously, we have treble ambitions, as you're calling it, to yeah. win all three tournaments. That might be a pipe dream. That would be <laughs> almost impossible. But still, that's obviously the goal. Do we have the depth and the number, just the, the number of players, the number of warm bodies mm -hmm. to actually compete in three tournaments successfully? I mean, it's a hell of a toss. Yeah, it is. It is a Hell of a task, but I think well, I think there's a lot more squad depth um, this year than there was last season. Remember last season we had one we had one squad um, for the Curry Cup and the URC. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, where all the other other teams they separated the Curry Cup squad from the URC squad. I think this season 
I don't know how, how what they're going to do about it, but I think we, our squad is deep enough to possibly have two squads, you know, especially after seeing what happened against Leon. Yeah, looked as fast for Marcus Bernard Pandu lending the boys, really turning it on against a strong Leon side and winning the game. So uh, if that's what plays in the Curry Cup, I think they can win the Curry Cup, Leba, but, but Leba, Lizzo, Koboka. So I think there is enough depth. And then that takes pressure off the URC guys, the Hurricane Champions Cup guys. You win the Curry Cup, then maybe get in the URC final, then who knows? Who knows? Yeah. You never know. Well, I know that, it's a pipe dream. But that's the, the signing of Immelman because that's, that's you felt we were maybe the one soft underbelly was at fullback. You know, we don't know if Wandy's going to be at 13 or 15. Yeah. Obviously, currently, you're out and out 15, but we needed more depth there. You bring in Immelman. At, at centre, I think we've got the depth. Maybe not at 12. Cornwall, I think, is a backup 12. He's playing at 12 tomorrow against yeah. Leon in really tough conditions. We'll get to that in a moment. Outside backs, you know, Stravino isn't even starting at the moment. And Stravino is red hot. Yeah. He's phenomenal. So if he's going to be our starting wing in Curry Cup, going to play some Heineken Cup, some URC, you're in really good you're in really good stead along with Navuka on the wing who yeah. scored that blinder against Leon. Sure, possibly M1 at the back. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a good team. It's a really good it's, back three. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got Bernard van der Linde. Oh, the good players. Mourne Stane will probably Stain. start at 10. Yeah. And then Cole 12. Hendricks, maybe at 12. Or yeah. Harold, we'll see. Or yeah. Yeah, DK won't. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Or MJV, see. maybe. MJV yeah. or Chris Schmidt. Yeah. Chris Schmidt, Chris Schmidt, Chris Schmidt. He was looking good on the tack. Obviously, yeah. he's working a bit of his defensive skills. And maybe Lionel at 13 yeah. to, to bring that veteran presence. For sure. It's a really good backline. Oh, it is a very good backline. I think, and the forwards are capable as well, for yeah. sure. The, the club, you've got Kasa, I know Klopp is playing today, but he'll probably play some Curry Cup leagues or Kaboka. I mean, Springbok in there. So I think it, it's looking good for the vertical Bulls, Mark. Yeah. It really is. Uh, you spoke about forwards yeah. and you spoke about. Uh, yeah, about about do we have the forwards to to put up the muscle to win that game? I want to chat about this position value chart that's just come out <sighs> recently. <laughs> you don't want to chat about it. <laughs> I don't um, want to chat about it. Let me open tracks, it. <laughs> it tracks the um, the the I don't want to say posi- it is position value, but it tracks the salaries of Salary players value. from all over Europe and South Africa as well, taking them into account and looking at all the salaries and breaking it down in terms of which positions command the highest salaries uh, in order from top to bottom. The position that commanded the highest salary was lock, four and five together. Um, those are the highest paid players technically in world rugby at the moment. And at the bottom, KK, as a former <laughs> hooker yourself, hooker, number two, the least technically in terms of contracts and in terms of salary, the least valuable position, which was shocking to me. I mean, this is your line out effectively depends on your number two. Line out one of the most important attacking pieces, yeah. one of the most one of the longest scrum. The, the, I think we all talk about the importance of set piece. Yeah. So I, I, that was really shocking to see. Yeah, I, I was wondering, like, why, um, like, why, why is it that? Is it maybe because you know, I don't know. Honestly, I, I've, I've oh, not, I don't know. I, it's I an anomaly. It's, it's an, an anomaly for me because some of the best players in the world have played in that position. Uh, I guess in all positions, I and mean, even your position seven wasn't was also like he wasn't. It was spot on. I think it was, was third last. Yeah. I didn't actually check. But, and the um, best player in the world of the World Cup was a, a number seven. So it's interesting to yeah. see, Mark. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know why. Why are hookers so undervalued? Is it because um, because maybe they've got the IQ of the number in their back? Case in point. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, it's very it's very interesting. And then uh, I'm pretty sure in the middle what were the wings there, Marcus? Like uh, around yeah, the wings were in the middle, but yeah. low. So it was 13 was pretty low down. Yeah. But at the top, along with locks, was second was fly half, which I think we all expect probably expected that to be number one. Yeah. I mean, that's the general. Um, and then the third most important, we all expected this as well, was tight head prop. I mean, yeah. we all talk about that's one of the first names, if not the first name on a team sheet, worth their weight in gold. So tight head at three anchors your scrum. So that makes sense. And I get locks. I mean, you talk about Irvin Etzebe. These yeah. are phenomenal locks playing rugby at the moment. Lord Diacha, um, Achis Neyman was commanding a big salary. Um, you're looking at Maro Itoje. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying, um, Lord De Yaga, you, you, you yeah, said mentioned it. Lourdes. Yeah, um, it's, it's tons of them, Mark. Um, no, Jason not. Jenkins. Jason Jenkins. Yeah, then, Lourdes, yeah, but, Lourdes copping a big salary. Yeah. In, in Ireland, they got some great they got some great locks there as well. Yeah, so. they, they become a big commodity, the locks, for sure. I agree, Mark. They, they become Alan a big... Alan Wynne Jones. Alan Wynne Jones, yeah. Um, and maybe that's why... Maybe, Lavanini. <laughs> Lavanini. Oh, they're coming out now. <laughs> um, but, Marky, the, the, maybe that's why um, the hookers maybe aren't as valued. Maybe it's not... Yes, they are good hookers, but is it the same as previous generations of hookers when you compare them to the locks? Now, the locks now, a good lock is locks so bad. Locks taking over. Man. Yeah, locks yeah. are good. They're definitely taking over. Like, Eben's probably the best player in the world. Yeah, with me. You yes, think, you know I what I mean? That. So, like, yeah. So, maybe that is why. Good job, bro. Okay, we're running out of time. So, let's move on to Know Your Foe. Yeah. We're taking on Leon tomorrow in the snow, it looks like. I don't know if you saw a photo of their field this morning. It is covered in a blanket of snow. It's going to be tough. Really, obviously, below freezing conditions. We're playing late kickoff, 9 o'clock their time, which is crazy to me. Um, yeah, they Leon are not doing particularly well at the moment. They've yeah, lost team. three of three. Um, they're tenth in the log in Pool A, so they just, they just got hammered by Saris, forty eight twenty two. So <laughs> just some talking points in terms of Leon. I know we beat them here with the second string quote unquote team. 
but obviously a different animal at home in mm. those conditions, you would imagine. Yeah, yeah. But um, we also saw one of the players in the, in, in the left, we won't mention who, and he said it's going to be a different, it's going to be a completely different uh, story there. Yeah. Um, for sure. But yeah, Mark, for me, they're a weird team because, you know, they're eight in the top 14, eight and seven record, and they're 10th in our pool, um, right? Which is not great. Um, but if you look at their attack, their attack is so good, you know. They've scored 12 tries in the Champions Cup, which is third. 84 points um, in the whole Champions Cup, which is eighth, which is in the, the top of. 340 carries, sixth in the Champions Cup. 23 clean bags, tied second in the Champions Cup. Um, this, uh, the, the defenders beaten, 68, second in the whole Champions Cup. With all these Leinster, all Sharks, Stormers, Bulls playing yeah, in the great. same competition. Had 12, and, and then fourth in meters and 52 offloads, which is their first. Which, 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 what that tells me means that they're just letting in too many points. Yeah, then yeah. Marcus, oh, you and know. the games they are winning, they're winning shootouts. Yeah. So I think defensively, there there is a soft underbelly there, especially this, especially susceptible to trash from set piece. That's where they're really struggling. So I think um, if we can, yeah, I, I think obviously they're going to attack. And it was a big scoring game here when we played them. Yeah. Um, they they kind of found their rhythm, hit their straps late in the in the first half, and then looked really dominant in the second attacking wise. But again, defense, as you mentioned, that's probably their weakness. But yeah. sticking with attack, the one player I want to highlight, Ethan Dumotier is 21. He's the top try scorer in the top 14 with eight. Mm -hmm. And he's six foot four. Jeez. He is a monster on the wing. We really did well to contain him. Navuka was, was lined up against him. I believe it was Navuka. Yeah, it was Navuka. Um, lined up on him and, and, and pretty much held him in check for that first half. But when he started to started opening up a little bit, um, space open in front of him, he was getting the pull a bit more. He looked really, really lethal. So that's a guy to check down. And then Arnu Puerta in the forwards. I want to mention him. Him because Pine Pino actually said they've got one of the best ball carriers in Europe in Anu Boots, and he really is. I mean, we know him better than any other than any other club will ever know him yep. in the Vodacom Bulls, and he is so dominant, so physical, and he he was brilliant against us. Yeah, he was, was like a, he put the whole team on his shoulders yeah, at once, especially in that second half. Yeah. You know, he was he was so good, Mark. And then I just looked at Dylan Creighton in the in, 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 in the in the in the um, in the forwards because just I based them just because of what I saw when they played against us, Marcos. I think Creighton he was one of the, the, the main guys. Oh, workers, oh, we like like workers really like you know. He, very industrious. And then in the back line, Kyle Gordon, I think he was a great um, um, game breaker at times. You know what I mean? Especially first phase set piece. He, he, he was fun in getting the ball at 12. So um, those are the guys who are looking out. Probably will, will be playing. We don't know what the team is yet, but if they are playing, those are the two guys that I'm really going to be, if we maybe try and um, nullify the impact, we can have a good chance of winning that game. And the other one, Roman Talfanua, look out for him. He's a bully. He is an absolute game line bully, a monster. So I think at Paul Ruan for Mark, we chatted about him being physical, improving, upping the anti physicality wise, going up against a real behemoth in Talfanua. So that's, if he, if it's a real, I don't want to say baptism of fire because he's had a few of those, but he's saying he's hitting his straps physically. That's a real litmus test for him, yeah. going up against one of the most physical players in the tournament. So really excited about that. 100% boy. Booyaka! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cakes, it's that time of the show where we bring on our guest this week. Another man needs no introduction, really. The Centurion, Lizo Koboka! I get it, sir! Thank, Thank you, you, so, so, Thank you so, so much. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. We ah, really appreciate pleasure, it. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Straight from training as well. Yeah, 100%. Like it's tough? <laughs> no, that was tough. Eh? Uh, but it's good. It's good. You need to yeah. get fit. Yeah, yeah. And so lucky that it started raining just after you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, lost to chat about Lizo. I mean, first up, I think just your most recent cap, your mm -hmm. your century. It was against Leon, if I'm not mistaken. Against Leon, yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, the team we're playing tomorrow. So, just a word on that, on winning 100 caps for for this incredible union and and getting it this season uh, against Leon, the team we're playing tomorrow. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, it was a time to to reflect for me, and uh, I'm just. Truly grateful for the opportunities that I got, you know, uh, uh, over the years here at the Vodacom Bulls. And, you know, just grateful uh, to my family as well for the support they've given me and everyone that has believed in me, you know, because I'm not a self-made man, you know. I, I'm standing on the shoulders of prayer warriors and giants, you know, that's my parents and uh, my siblings that uh, have always supported me. And, um, you know, uh, even the people, I mean, when I started it, um, uh, Queensbury Club playing rugby as an eight man, then I moved to Collegians, EP Kings, then I came to the Bulls. So, um, you know, it was just time for me to reflect and see how far I've come because we're always chasing, we always want more, yeah. but it's good to just look back and be grateful. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And we're going to go through all of this. Yeah. We've got yeah, questions line of cakes. Okay, so yeah, 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 just a quick one. Just um, I just wanted to start, you know, at that, that point, just before um, the club rugby, yeah. um, I was watching your. Um, the game changer, and you said how 
um, you know, one day he was just walking and he kept seeing this guy driving, driving up and down with rugby balls in, yeah. his, in, his, in his car and then he asked him to play and he introduced him to touch rugby. Yeah. Um, I want to ask, are you still in touch with that guy? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. we follow each other on social media. Yeah. Uh, good That's guy, amazing. yeah, uh, Quentin Hibner. Um, he was my neighbor as well, awesome. so uh, he played 10 and 12. Um, yeah, good guy, still in touch. Um, yeah, it's awesome. So, so what was the story there? So you saw this guy driving with rugby balls. You'd never played rugby before that, yes, right? Yes, you played yes. soccer your whole Yes, life. I played soccer, yeah. And then what about that intrigued you to to say you want to maybe give this give this a go? Yeah, I've always been a, a sports person, you know. I played a soccer, did 100 meters, um, you know, sprints, and uh, I, I played everything, you know, that was a, that, that was available uh, back home. So I thought, you know, try a new thing um, and... You know, I didn't even know what position I was going to play. Then get there, you know, ready to smash someone. Then they were playing touch, <laughs> touch rugby, yeah. you know, because it's training. <laughs> yeah. You know, then I started as an eighth man. Um, that was nice. Then uh, two years later, I moved to prop. You know, then I played both uh, loose head and tight head um, at collegians. Yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. And, and you say, like, like Mark said, like, uh, what intrigued you about rugby? Because what, what I just got from a lot of what I've read and, and watched of you is that yeah. you you really were forceful in terms of making making a breakthrough into the game. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, the calling of the CEO, uh, the EP Kings, I'm not mistaken, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what is his name? Is, is, that, is that Charles Dawan? Uh, no, no. You know? Oh, that said, I must go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah Charles Dawan. Yeah. You know, he played for they called him Verda Beast. Verda Beast. Yeah, but, at the time, he played there. So what happened is, um, I made my first team debut for the collegians right. against uh, Mbangeni. So Charles, uh, because the Sharks players, um, they release them to play clubs if they're not in the Super Rugby squad or um, uh, Verda Beast yes, yes, uh, yes, on yes, that yes. weekend. So right. they released him, so he was playing. But after the game, he called me and said, bruh, you have such a raw talent, you know? You're amazing, but um, you need time and you need to learn. You know, he asked me where I come from. I tell him, I told him I just started playing rugby and everything. Then he said, how about you go to the uh, smaller union, uh, Border Bulldogs, SVTA or EP Kings, you know? And um, then I said, you know what, um, uh, I'll give them a call, you know, because he said the teams like the Sharks, the Bulls, you know, they want people who are um, uh, almost ready, you know, yeah. people who know rugby already, not people who are learning to play rugby right. now, you know, which I understand. Mm. You know, then um, then I started calling the EP Kings now um, uh, at work because I was working for a construction company mm. after my graduation. Right. And um, so basically every day I was calling them. And uh, to, to Persistence is yeah, key sometimes. And the CEO <laughs> said, yes, so you're just persistent, yeah. uh, just come. You know, because they they asked for videos and I didn't have any videos of myself playing. You know, they tried to call people at collegians just to, you know, ask about yeah. me and stuff like that. Because I was playing club rugby, you know. I had never been in a professional setup. Yeah. And now here I am, just started gymming and I'm, I'm calling EP Kings and I went down. So it really was just the persistence that, yeah, that got you the, the, call. the yes. trial. That's yes, incredible. That's, that's insane. Yeah. 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 I Yo. refuse to say no. I was, <laughs> I was kicking the doors. For, for, for all the kids listening <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah, this, yeah, I mean, that is world class. That. Yeah. And, 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 and then just, just quickly on that, Marcus, last thing about that. And then you got there, and then you obviously, yeah. and then you got a play shop, but you didn't get a contract, I don't think. You no, know, yeah. um, for five months, I didn't have a contract there. Yeah. Um, I was uh, staying at the hotel for, for a month. And then I got out, you know, and they said I must come to training, you know. Um, that was 2011. Then I went to training. I uh, remember first day, I didn't have shoes. I went in barefoot, you know, in the gym. Jeez. And they said, no, I can't gym mm -hmm. barefoot, you know. Then I asked my mom, gave me, I don't know how much. I think I bought uh, shoes for 70 rands, uh, techies, mm -hmm. you know, uh, downtown. And um, I remember yeah, people laughing at me, you know, because they've never seen that in a professional setup where someone comes in with their shoes. And when I walked, they were making noise. <laughs> You know, I'm walking in there, you know, oh. and yeah, the people were dying, and and I was I was I was offended, you know. Yeah. But now that I've been in the professional setup, I understand that, the culture. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and and it was also I was also shocked to see people with such nice expensive techies mm -hmm. in one place. I'd never seen that in my sure. life, you know, and uh, yeah, so that's how it started, and. Um, 
basically I stayed uh, with Milo Noho, a friend of mine. He gave me curtains. I was sleeping with his curtains. Yeah, he gave I me curtains. That you see yeah, he too. was playing for, for servants, you know. Didn't have blankets. And um, I remember this one time, you know, Nas guy was still in touch. I actually saw him um, just before we went on holiday in December. And um, he gave me, I don't know what it was. I think it was pants or T-shirt for Springbok servants now. And uh, they said, you know, I thank you. I appreciate it, but I'll, I will end it. You know, that was 2012. And I didn't want to buy any Springboks thing. I mean, we would go watch the Springboks play, people buying the T-shirts, the scarves, the beanies. And, and I said, no, I will end it. And seven, eight years later, it, it happened. So, yeah. so even then, this is not 2012, you're saying, when yeah. you've only just really gotten in the contract. Yeah. You know, you're already saying you, your goal was set on being a Springbok. It yeah. wasn't just, let me establish myself in, yeah. in for the Kings, yeah. which I think a lot of people would be a reasonable, reasonably yeah. difficult goal. Yeah. Is, yeah. I want to actually go and be a Springbok. People were laughing at me. Eh? I, I, there's a guy that uh, we stayed with. He said, he, he told me I went to um, see my in-laws in King Williamstown. He came to me, he said, bruh, the, uh, the truth is, I want to tell you now, we used to laugh at you. This guy is saying he's going to be a springbok, but he's not even starting at the EP Kings. Remember, Yaku Engels was there, mm, Clint mm. Newlands, uh, Slechter. So we had, a, we had a lot of senior props at the time, you know, and um, they, they were saying, no, this guy is, is dreaming, man. Mm. You know, he just started playing rugby now. I never went to the rugby, tra the, these um, traditional schools, you know, for rugby can't speak English and now he thinks he's going to play for Springboks. He told me straight and he said, look at it now. you actually the only one out of all of us that made it because you were thinking like that and you, you worked for it, you sacrificed for it. So that's the power of not stopping on your first no or your second mm. no or your third or fourth no. Mm. You know, just keep going. If you believe in it, um, in your dream and in your vision, then, you know, I think we, we give up too easily if it doesn't happen in three, four, five years. It happened eight years later, you know, so just keep going, you know, uh, your dreams are, are valid. Yeah. But I think you are a true anomaly though, in, in, in rugby, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to start well, the game that, so late. Well, on that point, it's like, unbelievable. Well, well, I think Lizo makes your story even more incredible. Yeah. And I don't know if a lot of people pick this up, but actually the position that you play in, right? Mm. T props one of the most technical positions on yeah. a rugby field. Yeah. A lot of people say exactly. you need to start learning that technique at a very young age yeah. to develop and yeah. grow. It's not no disrespect to a wing or a, or a fullback yeah. or outside sense, but like the, the it's one of those positions you can kind of pick up later mm. in your career, I believe. So the fact that you not only did you only start playing rugby at like 18, 19 years yeah. old, but you became a prop yeah. and yeah, developed the technique and that, that and became a spring ball. and then became, went on to become a spring ball. So how, how did yeah. you develop that 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 or learn that technique in such yeah. a, a quick or short period of time? Yeah, so basically um, for me. Uh, and with life in general as well, um, being teachable, you know, um, always be willing to learn. I always say that the environment, the people, young and old, I am willing to learn, you know, from everyone. So um, I was asking questions to everyone, young, old, how do you do this? How do you do this? Why do you do this? How do you counter this? So I was always uh, doing extras on the scrums, um, Arobi, uh, Arobi Harris, uh, Religions, you know, have done so much uh, scrimmaging, and, and it's about just being teachable, having that spirit of uh, being teachable. You know, so I think that fast forwards you're learning because now um, you, you can learn from people that have done it. You don't have to learn from your own experience. You know, so I think if you are open to learning, then you learn quicker. And then last one, Mr. Kaboka. Lizzo, you have a hundred games for this beautiful reunion, but out of all of them, which game stands out? Oh, that's, uh, that's a tough one, yeah. Yeah, because there's so many highlights, you know, your debut is always special, your 50th is special, and your 100th is special, you know, so it's difficult to say, but, um, nah, it's difficult to say, but, uh, wow. <laughs> Two, maybe. Maybe the other season. We'll give you two. Yeah, or even three, think, maybe. Yes, I think, um, yeah, making a debut was special. Fifth year in uh, Australia was also nice. But I played my 100th year. So I made my debut away in Stormers. 50th year away in Australia, and my 100th was here. Yeah. So I would say my 100th was here. And uh, actually, that's the most special one. And okay, one cool. of the reasons is my wife. 
and my kids, you know, uh, uh, we walked together on the field yes, yeah. as so well. Nice. You know, let me tell you a small story. Uh, it's just a short story. So my wife says to me, uh, babe, I always see people, you know, just with the kids and they, they're walking. So you guys are going to walk and do this and stuff like that. Then later I'm going to come in and take the, the uh, I think she was, he was two at that time. Mm. And I said, you know what? Um, we're all walking out because, I mean, sure. she sacrifices She's the one praise, that's praying for me, you know, and I travel. She makes so, sure that everything uh, functions well at home. She supports me, you know, she encourages me and I do the same to her. And now we can't now, when it's time to celebrate, leave that person out. You know, when we celebrate, sure. we celebrate together. Sure. And it was just a special moment for me. Oh, yeah, that's there you go. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Cool. There you go. That was the last one. Okay, quick fire questions. Quickly, Luzo. <laughs> off the top of the dome, eh? Quick, quick, quick. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, we, we know you took up rugby late, but the first one is rugby idol. So even as a player, who's your rugby idol? Uh, beast. Beast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Favorite holiday destination? Uh, say Greece. Favorite door? Uh, I'm a bishop. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy red dry wine. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Eastern Cape or Pretoria? Eastern Cape, it's home. There we go. <laughs> Best mates in the squad? Um, damn. <laughs> Edgar Marutule was my best mate, Bandise Marku as well, but they both retired. <laughs> yeah. Both still working. Oh, they still here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, uh, best player you scrummed with? Uh, with. Um, Wow, Trevor, amazing. Have great seasons together. I'd say Trevor. Yeah. Trevor, you're kind of yeah. okay. Best prop you ever scrummed against? Uh, Julian Radenis. Jesus. The Lions. Okay, the Lions, yeah, yeah also yeah. a springbok. Yeah, yeah. um, and then last question, who in the squad would you take to war? Um, wow. So many warriors here in the yeah. team, you know, but I'd say um, uh, Spongi Lenovuka as well. I mean, he's interesting for there. Yeah. Yes, because I mean, his attitude is amazing. I mean, he's got a, he's a warrior as well, you know, uh, and I'm sure that when you get the opportunity, you'll, you'll take them. We saw him against Lyon as well. Yeah, brilliant. He plays well, yeah. So um, always positive, you know, always willing to learn and and sometimes we want people who, you know, but sometimes you need uh, heart and positivity mm. and smart, uh, strategic and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Lose the tooth in battle. Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last, the last segment, Lizo. This is uh, an interesting one. We're getting every single player yeah. to, <laughs> to uh, write down their MVP in the squad. So we, okay. we it'll be it'll be anonymous, so the audience won't get to see the name. Oh, okay. And then at the end of the season, we're going to read out the person who got the most votes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to just write down your MVP. If I have a pen here. Okay. Um, and then we'll ask you some questions or a question about who, like, why would you select this player? But I'm you don't, it away, obviously yeah. don't give oh, away okay. the identity of the player. So we're going to ask okay. you to just write this down there, please. Ah. And not necessarily talent-wise. It's like yes. who contributes yes, the most on the field, yes, off the field. Yes, yeah. Okay, you've got your mind made up. Really. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, no, no. This I got it. Quick, yeah. It's working. Okay, it's this pen. This pen is working. Yeah. Come on, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got a low budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's right. But I can, pen, yeah. I can send you a message. No, no, no. We've got, a, we've got another one here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Our producer behind the behind the scenes is gonna sort it. The guy that calls us that horrible word, the horrible word. There you go. Okay, <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, what? Oh no. No, no, it's a pencil. Where's the button? It's a pencil. <laughs> we didn't have pencils like this in Tabangulo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wanna just make the right part down and pin that. Okay. I don't know if it's spot. So that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll look at it. Yeah. See, fair enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. so Thank you, Manel. Thank you. Lizo <laughs> Gwoka <laughs> now. Imagine that. Okay. Why would you pick that that Red, uh, uh, consistency, eh? And uh, continuous improvement. Um, you know, as a 
as a player, a great human being as well. So he's not only contributing, um, you know, on the field, but off the field as well. A great person, but uh, consistency in terms of uh, performance as well. And growth, you can see growth. So it's one of the things, yeah. 100%. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a phenomenal conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Cheers. I want to go World Wolf betting segment. Um, who are we going for? Cakes. Odds for the Bulls, 2.09. So you get some nice purchase there if you bet on the Bulls at the moment. Underdogs against Lyon in tough conditions. So yeah. brave man to bet in those conditions, but I, I would take Bulls. And there's some other around stats around the Bulls. Bulls by four mm. lands you two, odds of 2.6. Jeez. And Bulls to win by between one and seven, odds are at 3.9. But Bulls to win by 8 to 14, odds at 5.8. So if you're really, really bullish Ooh. on the Bulls, go for between 8 to 14, some nice purchase. They're almost 6 to 1 odds. I like the Bulls to win by 1 to 7. Yeah, at, at just, just shy of 4 points. Um, nice odds there. I think I'm going to do that. Well, I think the Bulls are 1 to 7. Yeah. 1 to 7. Bulls yeah. 1 to 7. It's either that or 8 to 4. Just because of the odds of 8 to 14. 8 to 14. Yeah, in, in France. Yeah. No, yeah, 1 to 7. I'm, yeah. I'm not that bullish. I'll go Bulls 1 to 7, odds at 3.9. I'll just tell you the rest of my bet. Yeah. Northampton against La Rochelle. I'm really excited about this. Northampton on 9.2 underdogs. You went for it. Eh? Yeah, I'm <laughs> going for it. Massive <laughs> underdogs. They're playing at home. Um, they beat Quinns convincingly. They've lost back-to-back -back games, but they hammered Quinns. So, um, on top of that, French teams are notoriously poor, Travis. We know La Rochelle reigning, defending champs. So, it's, it's a tough task. Yeah. But with those odds at home, we know the French don't travel well. They guess they lost two back-to-back, -back, but they beat Harlequins, who aren't a bad team. Yeah. I'm going... I'm going Northampton there. I mean, La Rochelle, they've won their last three, but they lost to Bordeaux, and they only just beat Leinster by, sorry, Ulster by four points. So oh, but they lose to Bordeaux, yeah. yeah. And, and Sharks pumped Bordeaux. I'm saying, they look yeah. vulnerable. So yeah. I'm going Northampton there. I'm then going Sharks to beat Quinns again. They're away, underdogs at 2.5, and Quinns have lost their last three, including a heartbreaker to Russing. Yeah. So again, Quinns are there for the taking, and then Storm is to beat Clermont. I mean, the odds are minimal, but that's that's my bet. So yeah. Bulls to win by between one and seven, yeah. Northampton to win, Sharks to win, Storm is to win. Big odds if you go. I'll, I'll tell you the final odds later. Okay, but, yeah. but big, big odds. That's a nice mark. Those are nice. So Mark obviously went really in depth with the, with the points and stuff. So I just did a four game parlay, um, you know, 100 bucks on it. So I went Bulls to Bulls, straight on Bulls to yeah. beat Leon. Yeah. You have to bet on Bulls at all times. That's 2.09 odds. Then I went for the Quins to beat the Sharks. I know Mark went for Sharks to beat Quins. I just think Quins, I think Quins are very, um, you know, they're, they're, they're very unpredictable at the moment. So I think at home, Sharks coming in, it could be, um, and switching with those odds, Mark 1. Smith with yeah. one game under his belt against Racing. Yeah, 100 so it's like it, it could be something um it could be a bit of a banana peel for the sharks away from home and then series to beat the to beat edinburgh at home series on super hot hot form they top of um the premiership at the moment and and the odds there are 1.45 for the series and then gloucester to beat bordeaux this was my um you know my um out of the out of the box bet because of the, the odds were 3.1 for gloucester to beat um um, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, like Mark said, they're they not having a great season. Um, our, our old man is on the bench. He's, he's, not, he's not playing much rugby anymore. <laughs> Bordeaux should have stayed. Um, and yeah, so I went for Gloucester to win at home, and they're they playing some good rugby as well in the Premiership. So yeah, those are my bets, Marky. Nice. Uh, yeah. I think I think we'll leave it there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's been lack of debate. Nice chat with Lisa, yeah. of course. Gone over our bets. Um, some money to be made there. And really excited. Bulls. Nice odds. I know underdogs. Those some awesome. really nice odds. I can't believe the underdogs are the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. Second episode of Bulls Up Pod. And uh, we'll see you next week with the third. And go vote on Bulls. Cheers, Just mate. pull one off. Let's do it.